I didn't have something funny to do, but there is a cat in this movie, so here is a picture of my cat, because the real name of the cat in Captain Marvel is Reggie. My cat's called Reggie. Here's a picture of him. Now I look like a crazy cat person. Let's do the review. Captain Marvel is directed by the directing duo of Anna Boden and Ryan Fleck and we finally get to see what we wanted to see after that amazing sting at the end of Avengers Infinity War. We finally get Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers. But at the start of this movie it's a little different. We get Veers, a Kree soldier in 1995 and she has to go down to Earth to help the Kree army and in that time she realises that not everything that she's been told she is, is what she is. Hmm. Since the end of the complete mind explosion that was Avengers Infinity War, I couldn't wait when I saw that little logo on that pager of Nick Fury at the end. I lost my shit. I literally couldn't wait to see what was going to happen. Honestly. And the fact that they then confirmed that Brie Larson was going to be Captain Marvel, all signs point to fuck yeah. For starters, let's go with Brie Larson. It's the perfect casting, yet again by Marvel. Yes, okay, this is sort of a coming of age story and Marvel are very good at doing that. It's, you know, it's sticking very much to the Marvel formula. She, you know, has to go through things and turmoil and has these powers and maybe people have been lying to her, etc, etc. It's never gonna sort of change the world. But when you've got someone like Brie Larson and with the clout in Hollywood that Brie Larson has, I literally couldn't think anything but Marvel, you've done it again. You know, you don't necessarily think of these people in terms of being in the MCU, but didn't have to. They're so fucking good at choosing who they need she was perfect for the role. And finally, now we're on the 21st movie in the MCU, that's still crazy to think that the entire cinematic universe is now 21 movies young as far as I'm concerned, we finally get a kick-ass lead female protagonist. So yeah, you could kind of argue that Evangeline Lilly did it a couple of movies before, but she was a duo with Paul Rudd, so I wouldn't fully go with that, but having a full just this is all about her this is perfect honestly i'm glad that marvel you know with the advent of black panther and now with brie larson in captain marvel they are finally doing what everyone wants them to do and honestly best person for it and it's just yeah it's fine thank god they finally did it plus i've always got to remember that Brie Larson has a lot to catch up on. Yeah, this movie's set in 1995 and that can kind of work against it in a way because we already know what's happened in the last, I don't know, like there was like 10, 12 years in, you know, time between this and Iron Man. We know a lot has happened since and it can be kind of daunting. And when you first start watching the movie, you like kind of already know what's happened. So you know full well that you know, things aren't necessarily going to be bad because you know the next thing has to happen. And yeah, there's already been a lot of reports out there and lots of BuzzFeed articles and stuff. Why didn't Nick Fury page her like the last three times when we had Ultron and Thanos and all these other things going on? You could dispute that all day, but you just go blue in the face trying to figure out why. You know, but there's a lot to catch up on here. And I really don't, you know envy Brie Larson and having to convey that she's already the most powerful thing we've ever seen without actually seeing it yet. <laughs> May I also sort of, you know, give the effects team of this movie a damn good Mwah. The de-aging they did on Clark Gregg and Samuel L. Jackson in this movie is just sublime. We've seen it a little bit with the Michael Douglas scenes and all that kind of, they've de-aged people in the MCU before, they've aged people with Hayley Atwell as Peggy Carter, but to have the entire movie of like a young Sam Jackson with hair and a younger Clark Gregg, these people we've seen since at least 2009, 2010 with the Avengers and, you know, 
a the Agents of Shield series, which I'm a huge fan of as well. You know, it it was so the CGI team in this the special effects are just they're just impeccable. Look, regardless of how good I found this movie and how wonderful Jude Law is, mm, you sexy bastard, oh. and how good all the acting is in this movie. Yes, you too, Ben Mendelsohn. God, I swear I've seen him in like 10 movies every six months and he's just fucking everywhere, that man. But regardless of these things, there is still some issues. When I sat down with my friends in this movie, we were all loving it, you know, like, oh my God, this is so good. But at the same time, I always had this kneeling thing in the back of my head that there was really no impact in anything that was happening for me. Maybe because people can't keep a secret or try and debunk things on the internet for some reason, which I stay away from because it pisses me off. But it has to be all these fan theories and all these, it's not like the comic things while people masturbating to comic book bollocks. So maybe that sort of got me anyway when I walked in because you can't help but flick through social media and see some fucking theory about it but I just had no impact in the story for at least half. Just sort of sat there going, yeah, well, nothing can happen to her because we know where she's got to be in the next one because people can't keep their mouths shut. So you're just sitting there going, fine, look, all this movie is is to show how she got her powers. It's very much to me the same issue I had with Black Panther in the fact that they put this movie out just before we all know that Wakanda would be a huge part of Infinity War. So you'd go, well he can't die, and Killmonger can't be in it, because you've already seen the trailers for Infinity War, and clearly Black Panther's there. You clearly know that Carol Danvers is a huge part of Endgame, so just give me Endgame, but this is nice to see as an origin story, you know? Guys, we finally got a kick-ass lady in the MCU, and Brie Larson fucking nailed it. Plus, she looked amazing and gorgeous. I love her in this film. Welcome to the MCU, Brie. You're gonna fit in perfectly with whatever they have next after Endgame. And that end sting just made my penis fizz. It was so good. Cannot wait for what she does next. Bring it on. Honestly, guys, you're gonna love this if you're an MCU fan. It may be not be the strongest. It may be there with Black Panther in the way that it's sort of timed weirdly after a huge event that you know she's part of. Even though all that's happened, guys, bring on the next slot. She was really good. Let's see what happens. And with all of that being said, guys, I'm going to give Captain Marvel a 3.5 out of 5. So there you have it, guys. It was my take on Captain Marvel. Now, if you have seen the movie, then please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know it, as always. Now, guys, if you're an MCU fan, please let me know what your favourite film is. Of course, I'd love to know that too. What's your least favourite of them all? I've got some. Let's talk about that later on. But guys, until next time, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. You all know the drill by now. This is your friendly neighbourhood ginger guy saying, Ginger out.